So you know what I was thinking the other day? I was wondering just how quickly the new Series 7 charges up from a dead battery to a full battery. During Apple's September event, they claimed that now, thanks to the new charging system that has been redesigned for the Series 7, you get charging speeds up to 33% faster than the previous Series 6. But there's a few stipulations to this. First off, the Series 7 is the only Apple Watch currently that can take advantage of the fast charge feature and in order to take advantage of the fast charging speeds, it will require at least one of the newer 20 watt USB-C wall plugs. You can't just use the dingy little 5 watt cube and expect that to quick charge it. It's simply not happening. And it's one of the reasons that in the retail packaging, the charging puck on the other end is now USB-C. So I also got to wonder. I tried to slap on my Series 3 to the charger the other day and it seemed like an eternity before it was even to 50%. So for today's video, I figured, well heck, I own most of the previous watches and it'd be the first ever time we feature a charging test on the channel. So ladies and gents, without further ado, this test is pretty straightforward. The whole point is to see which charge is fastest and to see if Apple's claims hold true. They also claim 45 minutes of charging on the new Series 7 will take you from 0% to an impressive 80% battery. I know I've had several situations where my Apple Watch battery is in the red and I only have 20 or 30 minutes to quickly try and recharge it as much as possible before heading out the door. So this test is terrific for those that are indecisive on which watch model to get and also to be more informed. These tests do take a considerable time and effort to put together and plan, so at the very least, drop a like to feed the YouTube algorithm and help this video be pushed out to more eyes, and do please check the description as I have two active giveaways running consecutively. I'm giving away a ton of new Apple Watch bands and a brand new iPad Mini 6. So, without further ado, let's get right into the test. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. I have color coded each generation with its own sport band color so that we can distinguish them. So in red, we have the Series 3 which debuted in September of 2017 and is still being sold by Apple as of the recording of this video. I don't know why, but it is. In orange, we have the Apple Watch SE, a very versatile watch that was released in September of 2020 just last year and is still being sold directly by Apple. It's arguably the best bang for your buck. In yellow, we have the Series 5, released in September of 2019, with its highlight feature being the always-on display. Then in green, we have last year's flagship model, the Series 6, which added a blood oxygen sensor and improved chipset. And finally, all the way to the right is the Series 7 in blue, with its gorgeous, bigger and brighter always-on display. Okay, time to begin. So as you can see, all five watches have been drained to empty battery. None of these are currently on since my surge protector is currently off, but we do have all of them hooked up, and as soon as I flip the switch, you'll be able to see all five evenly receive power at the exact same time. You'll also notice that since the Series 7 is the only one that supports fast charging, all four of the other watches are simply using the 5 watt wall adapter that they used to come packaged with until Apple pulled an Apple and removed them from the packaging. I know, very sad. So anyway, all five are on Apple Watch OS 8.0.1. Yes, even the Series 3 surprisingly, and all of them have more than stellar battery health, all being greater than 90%. And here we go, about to start the test and flip the switch in three, two, one. All right, the switch is on and the race has commenced. You can slowly start to see each watch slowly turn on and give us verification that all five are in fact receiving power. All right, now as the test begins and as these Apple Watches awake from their slumber, please pause this video and comment down below which one you think will charge the fastest and in how much time from zero to 100. The good thing about charging tests as compared to my drain test is that they are more or less much more manageable to control in terms of variables since they're just sitting idle really just chilling while they're regenerating some juice. We'll be taking a look at every 10 minute interval so after 10 minutes we see some pretty unusual results. The series 7 seemed to either miss its alarm clock or kept hitting snooze because it was the last one to power on despite having the 20 watt adapter presumably feeding it more voltage. The Series 3 as expected is dead last, only charging up 7% but still powering on within those 10 minutes. 
The SE sees equal performance with 7%, followed by the Series 5 doing slightly better at 8%, and the Series 6 swings and takes the lead for now, coming in at 11%, and finally the Series 7, the most current model and yet the last one to power on, comes in second place, tying it up with the Series 5 at 8%. Odd results to say the least, but we'll see what the next 10 minutes have in store for each of these. 20 minutes, I feel, is a pretty standard time to leave your Apple Watch charging really quick as you're getting ready to go out, maybe while reading a chapter of your book, or so on. Especially on the Apple Watch, charge times are really important since not everyone leaves their Apple Watch charging overnight, and instead charge it up whenever it's low on juice, myself included. I can typically expect a day and a half of battery during normal usage from my Series 7. So let's see after 20 minutes how these all are doing. Starting in reverse order, the Series 7 now flexing its fresh hardware, fully taking advantage of the fast charge feature and now takes the lead coming in at 23% battery charged in only 20 minutes. I would say that's not half bad. Its predecessor, the Series 6, is still within reach though, not doing too bad either, coming in at one-fifth capacity at 20%. The Series 5 slightly lower at 19% and the SE squaring up with the Series 6 giving it a run for its money since it's also at 20% and the cheapest offering available that's now starting to show its age is at 14%. So how is your pick holding up so far? Now we get to the half hour mark. The half hour mark has its own special significance, since in Apple's advertising, they routinely like to emphasize that a bunch of their products that utilize fast charge can typically charge up 50% in 30 minutes. This holds true for the new MacBooks just recently announced, some iPad models, the iPhones, and now the Apple Watch. So after 30 minutes, let's see if the Series 7 is up to par amongst its other tech people. Years. The Series 3 sadly is still doing a pretty pitiful performance, not gonna lie, coming in at a rather sad 18% after 1800 seconds of charging. The SE is doing a decent job, especially being the best value for your money within Apple's current Apple Watch product line, and it comes in at 29%. The still respectable Series 5 comes in slightly lower, believe it or not, at 28%. The prior year's model, the Series 6 in green, comes in at 30%, but what about the Mighty 7? Does it hold up to the rest of Apple's 50% quick charge in 30 minutes claims? It actually comes in at 47%, which is within the margin of error, and I'd give Apple a big thumbs up as this is pretty close to their claims and I myself would be pretty satisfied with having my watch charge up to 47% in just 30 minutes. If conservative, 47% can definitely last you at least until the evening when you get a chance to wind down and recharge. Apple on stage claimed the watch can do up to 80% in 45 minutes. It's even advertised as such on the Series 7 product description page as you can see here. Take a look. Getting the Series 7 out of the way first, after 40 or so minutes, the Series 7 seems to keep on improving, now squeezing out a total. 67% of battery charged, slightly more than two-thirds of its battery is replenished, and honestly, that's quite impressive. You'll see at the 50-minute mark how Apple's claim does hold up, but taking a look at the Series 6, the gap is now widening, with it only being at 40%. The Series 5 in yellow with 38%. The SE with the orange band hits it with the classic same at 38%. And tragically, the aging Series 3 only manages to charge a quarter of its battery. I'm not too impressed by the Series 3 performance, but I already had my suspicions that this would be the performance we'd see from it. To me, it just doesn't make sense why Apple is still selling it when the SE costs slightly more and is a way better watch with a bigger display and better internals. But okay, as we approach the hour mark, we still gotta look over the battery percentages of all these guys at the 50 minute mark. So after 50 minutes, you'd at least expect your Apple Watch Series 3 to 6 to at least be nearing the 50% mark, right? Well, the Series 3 hits us with that yeet yet again, only coming in at 32%, not even one-third charge. Pretty sad. The SE fares much better, now coming in at 45%, so not too bad, almost half. Our Series 5 with this bright yellow band with 47%, and the Series 6 actually hits the halfway mark with exactly 50% battery. And the Series 7? Impressively, comes in at 85% battery, just 15% away from full health. Not bad, Series 7. Not bad. I'm actually quite impressed. So this means Apple's claims of 80% in 45 minutes is pretty accurate.
And now, as we approach the hour mark, all our watches have had plenty of time to recover, but which one, other than the Series 7, will best the others? That's a good question. After one hour, I'm really curious to see where the Series 3 is. So, at around the hour mark, the Series 3 once more disappoints only being at 40% battery. And the way this guy drains battery on watchOS 8, that's realistically maybe 3-4 to four hours on the Series 3, if you're lucky. The SE after an hour now sits at more than half battery at 55%, more than enough to carry you on through the day, but may not last till it's bedtime. The Series 5 is at 58%, besting the performance by the SE. The Series 6, even better, naturally, at 60%, and now the Series 7 is only 4 points away from being at max battery, coming in at 96%. So one can basically say it can charge from 0 to full, in about an hour more or less but if we want to be technical we must wait until it's official and around the 70th minute mark was when the series 7 was done it's ready for anything you want to throw at it for the day being fully charged by the 70th minute like i keep saying this is pretty cool we hadn't seen these levels of charging ever on the apple watch until now How'd the others fare though? The Series 6 still does a pretty commendable job coming in at 68% after those 70 minutes. The Series 5, by some weird fluke, gets ahead at 69%. I guess it's ready for some action if you know what I mean. The SE at a respectable 65% and f finally the Series 3 over half capacity with a measly 51%. I went ahead and slept on the Series 7 on the wrist, as there was no use keeping it on the charger since it was all done, 100% baby. It came to show the rest of the competition who's boss in terms of charging speeds. It won by a long shot, and just because I was curious, I went ahead and made me a late night snack while I kept the rest charging until 1 hour and 30 minutes. An hour and a half should be more than enough time to get some life back into your Apple Watch, right? If you only had a limited amount of time to charge it, say you had a jolt somewhere and that's all the time you had, this is what the rest of the watches will get you in that amount of time. The Series 6 would be expected to come out in second place, but surprisingly it doesn't. It comes in with a nice and healthy 88% after one and a half hours. In second place, to my surprise, was the Series 5, but only barely besting the Series 6 by one percentage point, coming in at 89%. I'll go ahead and say this is within the margin of error, and you can expect the Series 5 and Series 6 to behave the same with pretty similar charging speeds. The cheaper SE came in fourth at 86%, still pretty good, especially for saving a ton of money if you're not too interested in the bigger displays and all the new fancy features. And lastly, what do you think the Series 3 is at after 90 minutes? Well, it got to 70%, so I guess it's okay, but still, the Series 3 comes dead last and proves to charge the slowest, with the fastest, of course, being the all-new Series 7. I don't think this should be as a surprise to anyone. I think we all knew the Series 7 would charge fastest, but it's nice to see what 90 minutes of charging gets you on the different Apple Watch generations. So there you have it guys, my first ever charging test. This test was super fun to make, and I hope that you all found it useful. Battery and to an extent, charging speeds should be of utmost importance to a lot of people when deciding on purchasing an Apple Watch, especially on a device like the Apple Watch that regularly stays on the wrist even when going to bed, at least that's my use case experience. But I do understand that there are people who charge their Apple Watch every night, and that's great. That means you'll have to worry less about charging speed since your Apple Watch will be at full capacity just about every morning. I do hope you guys liked the video, share it with your friends, and make sure to drop a like as it goes a long way, and if you really like tech, consider subscribing as I'm continuously reviewing all the latest tech and giving you guys my honest opinion on them so that you are a better, more informed consumer. And with that guys, I am clocking out for now, but I'll be catching you all real soon in my next video.